spoiler alert, genetics did not teach me much about what to do to improve my mental health. I discovered the world of glucose. I had the opportunity to put on the glucose monitor, a continuous glucose monitor, as part of a pilot experiment. I didn't think anything would come of it because, again, I was taught, you know, diabetes equals glucose problem if you don't have diabetes, you don't have any glucose issues. But I learned something amazing with this monitor. I learned that the days where my glucose levels were more variable, so spike drop, spike drop, spike drop, my mental health was worse. Hmm. In the days where my glucose levels were steady, I felt better in my brain and in my body. And, and why people are, might be facing a glucose problem? So glucose is your body's favorite or preferred source of energy, okay? And every single cell in your body uses it for energy, from your brain cells, to your finger cells, to your liver cells, to your toe cells. And as human beings, the way that we give glucose to our body is generally by eating, by eating starches, like bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, oats, etc., or sugars. So anything that tastes sweet, from a banana to a slice of chocolate cake. Now you might think, okay, if glucose is energy, I should eat as much glucose as possible to give my body as much energy as possible. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, actually, that's not the way it works. And you have a lot of really nice plants here around your studio. And if you own a plant, you know that the plant needs some water to live. But if you give the plant too much water, it dies. The human body is similar. Some glucose, fantastic, too much glucose, and problems start happening. And some American studies show us that even if you do not have diabetes, you can still be giving too much glucose to your body on a daily basis and experiencing what we call glucose spikes. So rapid increases in glucose concentration in the body. And these can lead to lots of different symptoms from increased brain fog to cravings, to mood disturbances, to fatigue, etc. Notably, they impact your mitochondria. We will get to that. But essentially, steady glucose levels, steady blood sugar is a pillar of health. If you're on a glucose roller coaster, it's going to be really hard for you to feel well. All right. So I've been preaching the importance of metabolic flexibility. Mm -hmm. Normally, the mitochondria that make ATP from glucose can switch yeah. from burning their preferred fuel, which is glucose, to burning free fatty acids or even ketones. And that ability to make that switch usually happens at night, hopefully to most of us. But one of the things that was a real revelation to me is that 50% of normal weight individuals don't have metabolic flexibility. And 88% of overweight individuals don't have metabolic flexibility. Yeah. And 98% of obese people can't and, make the switch. And that means you're hungry all the time. And if you don't eat every three hours, you feel lightheaded. You think you have you know, low blood sugar. And you I have a lot of people who used to carry snacks in their purse everywhere they went because to try to combat this low blood sugar and this lack of metabolic flexibility. How do you steady your glucose levels? Yeah. The first place I went when I saw I had glucose spikes, I was thinking, oh man, does this mean I can never eat carbs ever again because I want steady glucose levels? And that didn't sound very fun to me because I love chocolate, I love pasta, and I didn't want to go totally keto. That felt like something that wasn't going to be a very enjoyable for me. So I started to ask myself, is there a way that I can eat carbs, the stuff that I love, with less impact on my glucose levels? And that's where my research began into the studies. People think about sugar mm -hmm. and table sugar, sucrose, is half glucose and half fructose. fructose. And they're very, very, very different mm -hmm. compounds and they behave extremely differently, yeah. even when we eat them and even in the way they're absorbed. Mm -hmm. So I'll put on my contrarian hat for a second. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that has intrigued me through the years is there's a diet that became popular in the United States. It's actually still popular uh, called the Duke Rice Diet. What is it? You basically, all you eat is rice. You okay. ever heard of it? No, never. It's, you just eat rice. All you eat is rice. <laughs> okay. And it dramatically makes you lose weight. Ah. Now, no, n nothing else, just rice. Just basically rice. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you can have a few vegetables. The, the foundation is mm -hmm. plain rice. Interesting. And just so our listeners know, a starch is just chains of glucose yeah. that are 
stuck together. Mm -hmm. And the more complex those chains of glucose are in a starch, normally the harder it is for our digestive enzymes to break it into glucose and absorb. So there are human studies comparing the effects of eating glucose mm -hmm. versus eating uh, fructose. Mm -hmm. Very different. Mm -hmm. And it's always been of interest to me that the Duke diet of just eating rice, how in the world could that work? Because all they're doing is eating glucose. Well, if they're, if they're switching from eating sugars, so sucrose to just glucose, it's dramatically better for your health. Yes. Say that again. <laughs> eating starch is dramatically better for your health than eating sugar. If you want to eat a snack, it's much better to eat a starchy snack than a sweet snack. And I try to explain to my readers that in starches, there's just glucose, but in sugars, there's glucose and fructose, and that makes it way worse for you. Way, 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 way worse for you. Now, unfortunately, today, and my work rests upon visualizations of our glucose levels, so I use glucose spikes to illustrate the hacks. We cannot easily visualize fructose spikes or insulin spikes, so glucose is incomplete. And if you were just focusing on your glucose levels, you might see that, for example, rice and a cupcake create the same glucose spike, and you might think, oh, they're the same for my body, but they are not, because something sweet will have an invisible, if you want, fructose spike as well, which is way worse for your body Yeah. than the glucose alone. Now, fructose uh, is, is a great mitochondrial poison. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I have to keep reminding people that in the good old days... It was great. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. It, it was fabulous. And we only had fruit uh, in a very short time period. You know what else was great in the good old days? The fact that eating something sweet released dopamine in the brain. Yeah. That was great, right? Because it told you, oh, if it's sweet, eat as much you, as you exactly. can. But today, it. it's a nightmare because you're being manipulated by all of these ultra-processed foods that are releasing dopamine into your brain, and it's really hard to control yourself. It's very addictive. Folks, this is a really, really hard concept to grasp. Glucose, the stuff we eat as a starch, is particularly a difficult to digest starch, is, is not the evil empire. Mm -hmm. But you're right, sugar, which is glucose and fructose, yeah. it, it is really mischievous. However, what I find is that glucose is a really helpful window through which to enter improving your food habits. And if you Think about your glucose spikes. You're also naturally going to reduce your sugar intake because glucose and fructose go hand in hand, right? right? It's really difficult to find fructose on its own. So if you're focusing on, I want to reduce my glucose spikes, as a result, you're also going to reduce sugar. For example, my first and most important hack I teach people is to have a savory breakfast instead of a sweet one, Yeah. right? And that is removing the fructose from your first meal of the day, which is so helpful. All right, define a savory breakfast. <laughs> So a savory breakfast is a breakfast built around protein. Okay, so a good portion of protein, it can be animal protein, it can be plant protein. I love having dinner leftovers, so the leftover chicken or fish or whatever from the night before. You can have some starch in your breakfast for taste. So for example, you might have a little slice of sourdough bread, some potatoes, etc. But most importantly, nothing sweet in the morning, except if you really want some, some whole fruit. But again, for taste, right? What you want to avoid is a breakfast that is pure starch and sugar. For example, oats with honey and a banana, right? Right. Pure starch and sugars, glucose, fructose, big glucose spike. If you really love sweet taste in the morning, have, for example, an omelet and then have an apple, but a whole apple, because when you transform a piece of fruit, then a lot of problems start happening. So no fruit juices, no jams, no cereal, no muesli, no granola, etc. No acai bowls, no smoothies. But if you really want something sweet, a piece of whole fruit. I'm glad you brought up smoothies. Um, <laughs> Americans don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. And everybody knows that. The Center for Disease Control knows that. I was recently assailed on a podcast. How dare I tell people not to have a smoothie? Really? Oh, yeah. Because what a wonderful way to get, to your, get fruits your fruits in. in. Well, the problem is, okay, there's a couple things about fruit. First of all, 
people identify some fruit with something being natural. They're like, fruit is natural, so it's good for you. The fruit that we eat today is not natural. Oh, thank you for saying that. Yeah, so the, the oranges we find today, the bananas, the strawberries, they are completely different from the ancestral pieces of fruit we might find in the past. So, for example, if you look at an ancestral banana, it's very small, it's full of seeds, it's tart, it's not sweet. In the same way that humans bred gray wolves into chihuahuas, <laughs> for fun, right? To create a breed that they enjoyed, they have bred fruits and vegetables yep. through thousands of years of selective breeding. And so today, our bananas are the chihuahua equivalent to the ancestral gray wolf or the ancestral banana. So that's the first thing to remember. The fruit we find today is not natural. However, if you want to eat something sweet, a piece of whole fruit is still the best thing to choose because whole fruit contains fiber and water. So yes, there's fructose in there. Yes, there's glucose in there. But the fiber is going to slow down the impact of that on your blood. Now, the problem arises when you denature that piece of fruit. Bingo. Right? You, you smoothie it. You pulverize the fiber particles. You juice it. You remove the fiber entirely. You dry it. You remove the water, et cetera, et cetera. Then you're just concentrating the sugar molecules. And it doesn't matter if those sugar molecules came from an orange and are in an orange juice or if they came from a beetroot and are in a can of Coca-Cola. To your body, it's the same molecules. So we have to be super careful and keep repeating this message. You hear that, folks? Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. One of my favorite expressions is eat whole foods, yeah. but eat them whole.